With the most recent patch for Marvel's Avengers, we had quite a few changes to gear, how it drops in the game and what fixes can actually drop on it as well. Now, the more interesting change for me was the fact that we've got a much better drop rate in regards to Jarvis barrier pieces and exotics from the Elite Heroic Hives. That's the, the hives that have 14 different floors. They're also known as uh, Last Avenger Standing, I believe that's the name for them. I always just call them the Elite Heroic Hives, but with the uh, the patch, the change we got is that you've got a 50 50 chance to either get a legendary item at the end with Jarvis Barrier on it, which can be pretty awesome on a lot of characters, or an exotic for one of your characters from the exotic set that drops as well. And it's probably been quite some time since you've last run this because it's simply not been worthwhile with the way the drop rates were. But I would say it's definitely worthwhile getting back into it. So, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up some infographics I've done recently specifically for the Elite Heroic Cat for each of the seven characters and we'll run over the items that drop and I'll let you know which ones that I'm going to start farming for probably from today I'll start farming so this will get me back into the game this particular change now before we do jump in and check them out if you're enjoying the content on the channel take the time to hit the like button and subscribe as well and recently content's been really pretty dry on Marvel's Avengers because there's not been much happening. So I've been a, a Bluestacks affiliate for quite some time. I've actually set up a channel specifically full of videos that have the Bluestack affiliate link and it also shows off the different games as well. So if you want to support the channel outside of watching the videos here, then check out the link in the description where you can check out the second Bluestacks channel download a few games and you can certainly help out this main channel a ton by doing that. But let's jump in and let's check out these sets. The first one we'll look at, because I'm quite OCD, we'll look at them in alphabetical order. So we'll check out Black Widow first. Before we do break this down and I run over which ones I would use and where I would actually use them, I'll just mention in regards to the stats on your exotics, they do roll higher than legendaries and they are set, so that can be really nice in some ways, but a bit of a downside than others, because you'll notice with the stats that are listed here, they're, they're quite might heavy, that's two pieces that have got might on them, and also there's no valor or anything on them at all, and there's only resolve on one piece there, so they don't really give you a balance build, and I wouldn't recommend running four pieces of exotic gear at all, just wouldn't work but one or two here and there can actually be really pretty effective but looking at the first one here it's the red room grasp so your first two effects here are variable effects so that's a random status effect in this instance on black widow it's on a light combo finisher and heavy combo finisher you don't often get them because you do get staggered however this is where the third perk would work out really nice it's brazen jarvis barrier with this you have a percent chance when hitting an enemy with a melee critical attack to activate Jarvis Barrier. The barrier protects against damage for 20% of max willpower. Now it also stops you from getting stunned. So if an enemy hits you and they normally knock you out the animation, if you have Jarvis Barrier, that doesn't happen, which means your light and heavy combo finishers would be more likely to actually finish that combo. So this is actually a really nice piece. If you're using, I believe it is the Vishanti, which came with the Kate campaign that extends your invisibility when you actually crit when you are invisible. But if you were using that alongside this slot one, it could work out really, really nice there. Looking at the slot 2, this is one that I think I'm going to actually start farming straight away. So you've got a variable effect for slots 1 and 2, so it's a random status effect on ranged attacks. Because Black Widow has three different weapons, it will essentially be two of the different weapons you get. The other ones I prefer would be the, I can never remember the name of them, I just call them the Magnums, the one that hit really hard, and then your regular pistols as well. The third perk, I don't have the name of it, but it gives you a 30% increased status damage from Shadow Ops attacks. It's pretty easy to build Shadow Ops on Black Widow, so this is a really nice piece. And once again, this is one I'm going to use on the main build for her. Looking at the slot 3, it's Red Room Uniform. This one here, you've got Stealth Recovery. 200% increased willpower regen when invisibility is active, that's really situational. Suppression resilience, which offers suppression resilience, very original there. And then extended evade, increases the distance covered during any evade by 30%. So I wouldn't use that at all, it's pretty garbage that piece. The last one is really nice, it's Spectre's Terror. So guaranteed chance of landing a critical hit when attacking an enemy from behind while invisible. Stealth Blitz, 15% increased damage when invisibility is active. And then Spectre's Cloak, increased the duration of invisibility by 3 seconds. 
So looking at this here, if you were once again to run the Vishanti as your major artifact, go for an invisibility build. Your slot 1 and your slot 4 would be absolutely incredible for that. They really would be amazing and I actually maybe want to try it out looking at them here. And then for your range build, the one I'm using is where I make use of the battery effect. I'll use a, a warm status on my guns and I'll use the cold status from your, your Widow's Bite, which is your Assault Heroic. But for that, the slot 2 we've got here would work perfect. So actually, pretty decent sets here. But let's check out Cap next. So this next set we have here is actually really underwhelming. Looking at the melee slot 1, you've got your variable effect here on melee attacks and then you have taunting finisher. So there's a percent chance when an enemy is hit by a light combo finisher to become taunted. But if you don't have the Jarvis barrier, good luck getting the light combo finisher off on a melee hero and you get everyone else wailing away on you. So I don't really rate this. Looking at the, the ranged item, I'm not going to read out the perks. The reason I don't rate it at all is... Cap, by and large, is a melee tank character, and the stats really pull this down. You've got precision and proficiency, two stats you really don't need on them. You're looking for your might and your resolve, so I wouldn't be using that at all. I would use a legendary in place of it. Looking at the slot 3, it's reflexive Jarvis barrier, so percent chance when parrying an incoming attack to activate Jarvis barrier. That's pretty nice, but in the, the Mega Hives, you can actually get a slot 1 where you can activate the Jarvis Barrier on Melee Crit, which has got a much higher uptime, so that's the reason I wouldn't use this. The next two perks on it, the first one is Counter Extension. Increases the duration of the debuff applied to enemies after a successful parry by 3 seconds. That's not that great. And then Aggressive Restoration, which is decent, but I would much rather use another piece over it. Potentially a piece with the reactive defensive buff, I would say, would be better. That's when you, you get hit, you get a chance to get the defensive buff, which is 60% damage mitigation. But aggressive restoration, it restores 5% of your max willpower whenever you defeat a taunted enemy. The final item here I wouldn't use at all, the slot 4, is impact break. So further reduces the impact resistance applied when debuffed after a successful parry by 50%. What the hell even is that? And then you've got Heroic Assistance, increase the charge rate of the ultimate ability, and Ego's Cry, increase the duration of Rally Cry by 3 seconds. So overall, as mentioned, really disappointing, and I can't see me using any of these, but I suppose that's a hero I don't need to farm on, so that's good. I don't want to farm on all of them, I don't have enough time. But let's check out the next character now, it will be the Incredible Hulk. So these next items here really are a bit of a mixed bag. You've got the, the slot 1, you've got your variable status effect on melee attacks, and the third perk is Green Frenzy. Increases the amount of overcharge energy gain from each attack by 15%. It's just so difficult to actually stay in the overcharge status. If you're a master at dodging on Hulk, then go for it, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend this. Same as with Cap, I wouldn't recommend this slot too because of the stats, Precision and Proficiency. You're really not wanting them at all on Hulk. Proficiency wouldn't be too bad, but Precision, of course, is a no-go. Looking at the slot 3, it's actually a little bit similar to Cap. You've got the Reflexive Jarvis Barrier, so it's a chance when parrying to activate it. You have Gamma Potentiator. It increases the amount of gamma damage done with any attack by 24%. It's actually really nice because it does have inbuilt gamma damage. And then Raging Regeneration increases willpower regen speed when rage is active by 200% that's actually a pretty decent piece you've got the the Jarvis barrier yes it is on parry and I find I don't parry too much I normally just jump out of the way but you've got that you've got extra gamma damage and then you've got increased willpower as well so that's one that could be worthwhile going for bear in mind as well with this you'll get a mixture of intensity resilience and resolve on this so the stats are always going to be useful from a defensive perspective Looking at the slot 4 here, it's got Ultimate Heroic Charge, it increases the charge rate of the Heroic Ultimate ability by 18%. You've also got a perk at the bottom that increases the charge rate of the Assault ability by 18%. And then you've got the middle perk that really pulls it down. It's a 33% chance to completely resist spin attacks, preventing any Heroic Charge Rate energy loss. Spin is a pain. I don't think it's worthwhile sacrificing a perk to actually have a chance to negate it there. So overall, looking at the items here, I would say for Hulk it would be the slot 4, or the slot 3, even that you want to keep an eye out for. Now, next character will be Iron Man. 
This next set, I would say there are a few that are pretty interesting and they cover both the melee and range builds for Iron Man. So the first one is your, your melee slot one here. It would work really nice if you were running a, a laser build on them. So this one you've got the, the variable effect here for the first two perks. That's a random status effect on melee attacks. And then you have armory amplifier. So 30% increased status damage of all weapons. Once again, if you're running melee, you are going to be using lasers there. You've got the ranged item. Pretty nice. It's really quite similar to the, the Black Widow one actually that I'm going to be farming for. So you've got your status effect on ranged attacks, so you're more likely to get it on the, the weapon you use more often. If you're ranged, it's probably missiles. And then you have armory modifier, 25% increased status damage of all weapons. The slot 3, we've got reflexive Jarvis barrier, so once again that's when parrying an incoming attack to activate that. Overcharge recovery, 200% increased willpower regen while overcharged. Hyperstatic shield, I believe this doesn't actually work. It's energy barrier while electrocute nearby enemies, but even if it did work, it would be pretty niche, so I wouldn't recommend that. The slot 4 has static overload. Arcfield's defensive barrier now electrocutes nearby enemies. The next perk name we don't have, but it grants 10 points of intrinsic energy when performing takedowns. And the final one increases the charge rate of heroic support ability by 18%. So looking at this, if you're running range, the slot 2 can be good. If you're running a melee laser build, the slot 1 and the slot 4 can actually be really nice on them. Now, next character will be Kate Bishop. We start off here with the melee slot one. I couldn't recommend this one at all for a melee build. It's got quantum effector, so quantum teleportation and intrinsic attacks deal status damage based on what type of melee status gear is equipped. I like the idea of this, but it's really pretty weak because you won't be using quantum teleportation and intrinsic attacks that often, to be honest. It's got a variable effect on it, and the final perk at the bottom there is 15% increased quantum energy, but I wouldn't recommend running this at all. The slot 2 for the range build is actually really nice. It's Archer's Haste, 15% increased firing time for Razor and Disruptor Arrows. Disruptor Arrows is the one I use, it allows you to get your debuff off. You're doing the extra 130% damage to enemies. You've got a variable effect here, so you can add a status effect to one of your arrows. And then you have Scattershot Effector, 20% increase in stun, status, and all normal damage of Scattershot Arrows. So for a Scattershot build, that's actually really nice, but you will need to pick up your damage buff on your slot 4 then, that will be via your Berserker buff where you get your damage buff when you hit 16 times in quick succession, your scatter shot arrows can proc that really quick. Looking at the, the slot 3, we have Shroud Enhancer, Quantum Shroud reduces the reaction severity of enemy attacks and gain 20% or minus 20% bonus damage reduction. Blink Shroud, this has now been fixed in the last patch, previously when you used this, I'll break it down, essentially when you dashed you would get your ultimate benefits for, I think it was around about 4 or 5 seconds, now you'll just get the defensive buff, so it's, it's not as over the top, but it was without a doubt over the top before and it did have to be pulled down, but it could still be worth running on a, a melee build if you're looking for a, a tanky kit, and that's for that particular perk there, the Blink Shroud one. The final perk is Quantum Battery, it's 15% increase in maximum quantum intrinsic energy. The final piece we have here, Decoy Generator, 30% increased regen speed of quantum reactor energy while decoy is deployed, Shroud Effector, which is 30% increased damage absorbed by Quantum Shrouds, that could make her really tanky there actually. And then the final perk increases the duration of Quantum Overdrive by 4 seconds, that's your, your ultimate heroic, that particular one there. So looking at the items here, I would say the slot 2 is worth running on a range build, and I would say the, the slot 3, potentially the slot 4 as well, if you're looking to go for a tanky Kate Bishop, but I think it would be a bit strange running a tanky Kate Bishop, I think she's much better doing support and damage. But let's check out the next character now. We have Miss Marble up next, and she's got some pretty awesome items here, so the, the melee slot 1, you've got your status effect on melee attacks for the first two perks, and then you have Polymorphic Disruptor, so 35% chance when defeating an enemy to generate an Intrinsic Corp while Polymorph is active. It doesn't sound that good, but I actually fancy trying to do a, a spin to win build with that, because when you're spinning around doing your World 1 move, that is a Polymorph move, so it'll be classed as that. You use that alongside the ring, you'll be getting lots of orbs dropping and you'll be gaining an extra amount from them. So anyone that's actually got this gear already in the ring, Try that out and let me know how it works, if you can get a decent spin to win build on the go. Looking at the slot 2, 
I don't really see anyone running a ranged Miss Marvel at all, so I'm just going to quickly skip over that one. Go out your way for it, because you're not going to want precision as a stat on her, you want resolve, the way her heal works. The slot 3 and 4 are amazing from the perspective of her being a support character, so if you're running her in your team, even if you're not playing as her, you're really going to want these. So looking at them... The slot 3 is Guardian Spirit, so 15% damage reduction from attacks for any team member with Team Spirit active. Team Spirit is when you actually just use your heal. It's not worded that way in game, but I've tested it and your heal counts as that. You've got Heroic Assistance, so you can actually use the heal more often. And then you have Healing Spirit Recovery, 200% increased willpower regen from Healing Spirit, so that's pretty amazing. Slot 4, you've got Mighty Spirit. It adds a team damage buff to any team member affected by Team Spirit that increases all damage dealt by 20%. The next one adds a crit attack chance bonus of 35% to any team member affected by it. And then finally, you increase the charge rate of the heroic support ability by 18%. There's a soft cap on it, so it does actually cap out around about 35% or so, but your slot 3 and 4 will get you up to that, so you can spam the heal more often. So from a support perspective, slot three and four are absolutely incredible they really are they're just amazing and then from a fun melee perspective if you want to try a spin to win build you could go for the slot one as well now let's check out the final character this will be four for the final character then we've unfortunately got pretty disappointing items here so if we look at these you've got your melee slot one your variable effect status effect on melee attacks you'll be looking for that on the signature attack where he spins the hammer around and then Asgard's Insight it increases all status damage dealt by 25%. So that item can actually be really pretty nice on him. Although 4 is a character you want to stack Valor on. And you don't see Valor on any of these pieces. But the melee slot 1 is certainly decent. I wouldn't go any more than that. The slot 2 here you've got your variable status effect on 2 different ranged attacks. And then you've got increases the amount of enemies that can be targeted by Molnir by 2 targets. Requiring the manual targeting skill. Can't really recommend this one even for a, a range build. The slot free Asgard's Insight increase the rate of heroic energy regen while overcharged by 15%. Asgard's Privilege increase willpower regen while overcharged by 200%. And then Asgard's Fury increase the amount of overcharge energy gain from all attacks by 15%. Can't recommend this item. And then the final one, I can't really recommend that either. It's Asgard's Dominion increase all damage dealt while overcharged by 20%. Lightning Potentiator is nice due to all the shock he has and that boosts it by 24% and then the final perk is Asgard's Fury. Increase the amount of overcharge energy gained from all attacks by 15%. If you're an amazing 4 player and you can keep overcharge up it could be worthwhile but I think for the majority of players it's really not that good that one. So 4 unfortunately is really disappointing. At a push I would use the, the melee slot 1 on him. And that's just about it there. So unfortunately we finish off with some pretty bad items. But there's quite a few characters that have got ones that are worth actually spending my time farming for. And bear in mind, as I said earlier on in the video, it's now a 50-50 chance. So if you're not getting one of these that you're looking for, you'll get a legendary gear with Jarvis Barrier on it as well. And they've actually changed around the perks a little bit on the Jarvis Barrier gear. So they should actually be more in line when they do drop as well. Check out the patch notes if you want more info on that. I hope this particular video has been helpful. Let me know if there's any particular items you will be farming in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon.